Hey, I'm here with Mara up from Portland. Um, tell us a little bit about what's going on in music in Portland. Absolutely. Um, we are right now, it being January, in the middle of Portland Music Month, which is, as far as I can tell, unique in the country. Mm -hmm. It is a month-long citywide multi-venue festival that really is about focusing the attention of the city on our music culture nice. um, in a very decided and fo in a real purposeful way, the business community to tie the, connect the, the dots for them to say, this is important and you want to stand with this because it's attractive for your employees to the tourism sector because it draws music tourism is the fastest growing tourism mm -hmm. trend and to the fans themselves to remind them with a $1 upcharge on the ticket that music doesn't just survive on their $10 cover charge, that we really need to be thinking about it as culture. And we're in our third year and it just keeps on growing. And I think it really has gotten its legs in the local imagination. January is Portland Music Month and that's what we're looking for. That's amazing. I love that you've gotten all these venues to cooperate on something, first of all, which is kind of a miracle. Um, mm -hmm. And so you add a dollar to the ticket and mm -hmm. how do you, what happens to that money then? Like, what do you use it for? All of it, 100% of it goes to the ECHO Fund, which is one of our big Music Oregon initiatives um, to support independent music projects. There really isn't any project support for um, artists in popular genres. Mm -hmm. So um, in the first year, we were able to raise... I think a little under $40,000 uh, last year, we were able to give away nearly $60,000 and we're hoping to top $100,000 this year. Wow. And, and that's in grants for artists. Just... That's mm -hmm. directly grants for artists. And what we're hoping to do is to use that as sort of proof of concept. We had more than $900,000 asked for it, for the Echo wow. Fund this year. And we we're only able to support, you know, 6% of that. So that by demonstrating the need, by demonstrating and kind of seeding the pot, we can mm -hmm. now go to other funding public sources and say, this is a culture that needs support. We're not just coming with our handout. We want matching money and we will continue mm -hmm. to grow these other funding sources. But this is a, a creative community that needs support. That's really fantastic. I love I love getting everyone together around this and focusing the city's attention on music for the whole month, just like big citywide celebration. Yeah. Um, there's something else you do that's really cool that I has totally lit a fire in me, and that is um, your music video project. Can you tell us about how that works? Yeah, Music Video Month. We were dumb. We made it at the same month as Mu Portland Music Month. We're going <laughs> to shift it. We're going to make, I've already got commitments. We're going to move it to February next year. <laughs> But what it is, is really trying to acknowledge some of the relationships, sort of sibling relationships between filmmakers, particularly independent filmmakers and independent musicians. Um, and the and so Music Video Month is the brainchild of an amazing fellow in um, our film community who negotiated out probably 40 different deep discounts on things like locations and um, stock video and rental of equipment and crew and all these different things. Many of these filmmakers spend their year making commercials and corporate films. So this is a real creative outlet for them that they're willing to come together and create something really incredible. So we do matchmaking events so that musicians can meet filmmakers. We do, um, we'll do a showcase of the resulting videos. Fine. I think we have three dozen videos being made in this month. Um, and it, they just have to be shot in this month. Post-production can happen later, but it's a really exciting program because I think it, it focuses a lot of that energy and create some sort of collective buying opportunities and all of these discounts. And the discounts weren't all necessarily local venues. We're negotiating more and more of them with like stock footage, footage um, stock video you can get from other places. So oh, wow. it could happen uh, statewide or in multiple cities. I could imagine mm -hmm. it working that way as long as you're bringing together these communities to get creative in January or February. 
yeah, February in the future. Yeah, <laughs> it's, that's such a great creative challenge. Just like get together, make something. We're going to make it easier. Here's a reason. Here's a, a yeah. kind of a little nexus point that you can use yeah. to like get together and, and make something new. Um, yeah. I really, uh, you've helped us out a lot with um, collecting information on our own music community. You helped us with the uh, Alaska Music Census by way of your kind of Portland Music Census and now Oregon Music Census. And uh what have you uh, what have you learned about the Portland music community over a few years of gathering that that information, that data? Like what has that helped you to communicate about your music scene? Yeah, it, it I think for too long, the popular music culture sort of defends itself because it's wonderful. And it is. We know it's wonderful, but that's not how policymakers think or talk. You need to have data. You need to have, um, you know, quotients that you can compare to other things so that they can kind of get their heads around how you fit. Um, so we have been um, doing a ton, just being able to say that we've got more than 14,000 unique recording acts that release new music in the five years prior to COVID from Oregon. You know, with nearly 10,000 of those from the Portland metro area. Um, We've got 1,200 music businesses. We've got, you know, more venues in Portland than they do in Austin or Nashville. Mm. These kinds of things, when you can give a number and compare it to something else, which is why you and I have been working for years now on creating a Cascadia music index you know something that we can say we may have fewer of this but we've got more of that which gives (laughs) gives policymakers in any given place a way to kind of center in on the things that are distinct and you know maybe worthy of additional uplift or economic development so if you have an amazing number of um you know luthiers people (laughs) making incredible instruments being able to tell that story means you can get potentially economic development, attention, investment, and advantages for those businesses. Yeah. And what what does that like good economic investment or good policy look like as a as a closing question? Like what would your specific goals be? Um, now that you have this information, what would you like to make happen in policy and economic investment? There's a lot of policy discussion. You could have a whole conversation just about that. You know, there's noise code enforcement, there's livability, there's acoustic zoning, there are there's planning and sustainability and how you make sure that places that deliver culture remain in places that may become increasingly dense or that have new influx of population. Mm-hmm. Um you know, it's about how do you the film industry gets tax credits for productions that are done in the state? How do we look at analogs and other industries? And mostly because music is this broad reaching tendril thing. People have called it the coral reef because Mm. it supports so many other things, Um, but it's fragile and it's threatened. Um, You know, people don't debate whether we should have green spaces in our, in the places that we live. The only debate is how do we make them happen? How do we support them? Mm -hmm. That's the kind of ubiquity that we're hoping through our government relations, our music policy council and other things that we can really start to make a statewide and city value that music is vital. It's a Mm -hmm. cultural and economic imperative for us. And we're creating the numbers and galvanizing the community in a way that absolutely demonstrates it. Oh, that's fantastic. Thank you. Thanks so much for the ways that you all have been a role model and a help to us up here. <laughs> it's, we it's love being partners. Forth. I learn as much from you. <laughs> so, thank you so much, Mira. Thanks to Music Portland and Music Oregon and your teams there. And uh, we can't wait to see you next year. All right. Take care. Bye-bye. Thanks. Bye.